Big hit, big hit, rock! Yes, catch. <laughs> We're having an absolute ball down on the Coffs Coast in New South Wales. We've tackled some A-grade tracks. We've seen some campsites that'll simply blow you away. We're having an absolute ball. We've got a family. It's their first time towing a camper trailer. Let me tell you, this is one heck of an adventure. But check out where it started. All right. Whoa, that's a big hit. If you're into tough four-wheel driving and epic campsites, then this is the video for you. And I've also got cracking news too. Get 10% off store-wide at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter. That's 10% off winches, spotlights, and heaps more gear. Just keep an eye out for the exclusive discount code in this video. And of course, enjoy the adventure. We've got the perfect trip planned out that combines tough driving and scenic camping. We're gonna be starting in Woolgoolga, where we're heading up the hills to a magic camp spot on an escarpment. Then we're heading to Pebbly Beach, but of course, not the easy way. And finally, we're northbound to finish our trip on Woolai Beach. Not only is this trip great four-wheel driving, it's perfect for Lee and his family to experience life on the road with a camper trailer. Hey, Lee, you got a copy up there, mate? How are you feeling, mate? Yeah, I'm, I'm loving every minute of this already. It's only just started. Yeah, we've got a few jam-packed days, mate. I think you're going to come out of this with a different perception on, uh, well, probably a different perception on Sean, eh? That's for sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you get a new outlook on uh, how to tow a camper trailer in the bush now to make it extremely comfortable for the family. Of course, Lee isn't the only member of the Dawson family. Claire, his wife, is up front riding shotgun, and up the back we've got Kayla and Tegan, who are so excited to get out bush and go four-wheel driving. That's enough chit-chat. It's time to air down and engage low range. Alright guys, this is the first little hill. It's um look it's nothing too radical, but I reckon it's steady steady. Pick your way up, pick a line. It's not too steep, I think you'll all be fine. We've done our homework, a little bit of research, and we've picked out some tracks out the back of Woolgooga that are gonna take us to an awesome campsite that we've heard about. And I reckon these tracks are really gonna put us to the test. There you go with that trailer, Nick, no dramas, mate. Hey, she's going good so far, just follow me up. To That's begin with, Nick from Black Series is gonna demonstrate some driving techniques. And then it'll be Lee's turn to put them into practice when we swap the trailer onto his 40. Here's a bouncy bit, guys. <laughs> Sean's decided to jump in his Pride and Joy 79 series, and he's done so because he really wants to test it out on some tough terrain out the back of Coffs. That sounds pretty angry. Slippery as the last truck up, let me tell you. Pretty soon and we've arrived in a section of rainforest and it's just beautiful through here. I'll tell you what, one of the bonuses about going last in the convoy is you get a little bit of time to stop and smell the roses. We're in the back of Coffs right now and if you give them the thing, we're right in the middle of the Dane Tree. Have a go with this view up here. I mean, there's palm trees, big rock shelves, absolutely beautiful. There's a lot of mud and a lot of four-wheel driving, so I better get back to it. Now this rocky climb is not what you would call overly steep. However, what it lacks in steepness, it sure does make up in ruts and boulders. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Wait till you see what's up here. It's gonna be about picking the line, folks. I'm just gonna take it really slow here and just crawl my way up it. A couple of these ruts would almost tip you over if you took the wrong line. Definitely wait there, Nick. As for the boulders, there could be some serious panel damage if you okay. fall down onto one of them. Yep. Well, that's an angle. That's quite the angle. Oh, come on up you get. This is really going to be all about wheel placement. Okay, I don't know what to do now. I really don't know what to do now. The funny thing here, of course, is that we have got some distinctly different four-wheel drives, <laughs> and I think each of us are almost going to have to pick our own line when coming through here. Oh! oh ho, ho, ho. Yes! Oh, masterful display of driving. Hang on, I'm stuck. 
must be pretty tough and I can't see a thing from back here but um yeah I think your silence is an indication and now you're stuck. I'll just keep I'll just gonna try a different line, hang on. As you can see the D-Max makes it look darn easy. Oh that was something of sheer brilliance. If I do say so myself, come on up. Despite the big GU being one heck of a capable vehicle, I'm going to jump out and just make sure Nick is spot on through here. It's track number one, and we don't want to do any damage straight up. Going forward. That trailer's doing that with ease. That's a good drive. Well done, Nick. Yes. Okay, Lee, this is it, mate. Right, hey guys, let's do it. Lee and the family are making it look easy. It's all about wheel placement, and I'm just making sure they're getting it spot on. Look at the kids in the back; they're loving it. Yeah, that's a tricky little section right there. Best you have another shot, mate. Just realign yourself and have another go. Oh, look at that back end swing around. Good bit of driving, really good. I think my best bet is just take it pretty easy and um, hope for the best. Righto, Shano's up in the 79. He's got a high centre of gravity and a fair bit of weight on board. He's carrying all the camera gear and a lot of the supplies. Oh. It's going to lean over a lot and look quite sketchy at times. Oh, like right there. I, was, I thought you wanted me to go left hand down yeah, there. Yeah, it went too, went too far. I slipped off that rock, what everyone did. We're going to reverse here and just try a slightly different line, but have a look at how precarious that is. Doesn't need to be steep to be gnarly. So we're going to go right hand down and back, which should hopefully level him out a little bit. About to drop in again there, mate, on the rear. Yeah. I can come, probably come forward now on the left line, could I? You have to come up. You can't just gently, gently go back. You have to come up. Now you're in a much better position just to crawl up. I'm going to put some stuff in that hole. When all else fails, I'm a big fan of doing a bit of track building. Come on, help girls. <laughs> and when you've got so many hands to help, you may as well. That's it. Gently, gently, Sean. A perfect drive, mate. Those rocks were just enough to keep that lower left from coming down too low and picking up that front right, which is exactly what we didn't want it to do. This next little challenging section actually has two distinct lines. Yeah, you can definitely see the line. The trouble is, if I slip in there... Yeah, it won't be pretty. That's panel damage city. If you want to give it a go, we can have a look and you can, might be able to reverse out if it doesn't feel good. There is an easier track if you need to. Trouble is, I reckon I've only got one shot at it and if I stuff it, I'm going to slide into that bank. If he puts a front right down into that, it doesn't have the flex to support that. It's just going to go bang into the bank and that's going to be, yeah, panel damage. We struggle here up, back down, then up. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not even worth trying. Horrible. No. no, you're right. You're right. Oh, well. It's common sense. The plan of attack here, of course, is to take the right hand track, but I'm going to swing out hard left. Oh, I haven't got far and I'm stuck already. To try and avoid that really awkward angle with the big rut in the middle. Have a look at that traction control work. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Just a science that I don't understand, but by goodness, it works. Pretty tight through here, Nick. That trailer, you might have to pick a bit of a different line, mate. Of course, what Nick's got to be very careful of coming through here is the extra length of the trailer on the back. He's just got to swing wide on some of these tight corners and make sure he doesn't get hung up between the truck and the trailer. That's him. Turn. He's done this a million times before, though. He knows exactly where that trailer is, and he's pretty darn good at judging the distance between these trees. Let me tell you, there's not a lot of room to play with. It's real slow, mate. It's just touching the bark. Real slow. Oh, like it's yeah. real tough. 
Okay, Lee's seen how it's done. He's going to take the exact same line as the D-Max. And I think he's going to crawl through here without any dramas at all. Nicely driven, mate. That's really well driven. You just fit through there. Thank you. Testing, testing. Yep, I've got you loud and clear. All right, all yours. You just bring him up here. Which way do you reckon I should start off? Stick up to the right. Stick up to the right. Yep, mine or your right. Mm, your right. right. Oh, I wouldn't do copy that. Copy that. Copy <laughs> that. <laughs> but you're the you're the boss. Thanks, mate. You did a good job getting him this far. My main concern with Sean, of course, is this large rut in the middle. It's going to unweight that front uh, right, put all the weight on the rear left. You're a lot thinner than you were when I made this plan in my head. Mate, do you want to give that microphone back to um, Kayla, please? <laughs> it does pay to jump out and have a look for yourself if you're at all unsure. Yeah, I don't want to do that. You could almost go straight in from that Yeah, you could. Right I, I would not turn that wheel. All right, look, look, let's just see what happens. I love it when you say that. All right, just really pull it, right? as far as you can drive that thing. Don't touch those wheels. That's the line you want to be on. Bit of drivers, mate, a little bit of drivers. Throttle control is the key here, and Sean is doing it perfectly. Here we go. Just gently, don't go gunning it. Gently, 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 gently. Slowly. On that line, do not touch that wheel. That keep was coming, precise coming, wheel coming, placement. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. What a guide! I'm going to the Kimberley, and I'm going to catch Barrow Monday. <laughs> we are officially going to the Kimberley in your boat. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> We're getting really close to our campsite for the night now, but we've got one more track to tackle to get in there. Apparently this camp sits up really high, so we've got a bit more climbing to do. Just pick your line up here, Camp. It looks like if they got a bit of rain through here, this creek could flow, but um, coming up to the side, there's some, we call them rock steps, really. They're just kind of like boulders sticking out of the ground. You can see where the water must absolutely charge down these hills. These erosion gullies are huge. The best way, I think, of tackling these is to try and straddle them the whole way up. Nick's seen me and he's going to try and follow suit, of course. Bit of a slip there and you can see exactly what I mean. He's into that rut, but it's nothing that the lockers can't figure out. He crawls his way through. Right, Ali, this is going to be precise wheel placement through here. That rut is tricky, mate, real tricky. You want me to come down for a spot there, Lee, or you're right, mate? Yeah, wouldn't mind it, please, mate. Mate, I don't think there's anything else for it, but just to pull you back into line. Righto, mate, you lead the way and I'm in for it. It's situations exactly like this, which is why you pay money for a winch. Righto, go in. The winch is there for a reason, and that's to get you up sections you can't drive. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. No shortage of trees up here, and this one just happens to be in the perfect position. This is the first time Lee has ever used the winch on his truck or on any other four-wheel drive his own. It's a little bit tense, the very first time you ever use a winch. We've got all eyes on the job though, and it's only a short pull that's going to be needed to get Lee into a better position. There you go, simple as that. He'll drive from here, no problem at all. I reckon that'll do Lee's confidence the world of good. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's you, that's you. Right, eh, Sean, eh? Do not fall in that rut, mate, because I'm not sticking around to dig you out. Starts to lift wheels when you start doing that. <laughs> and you're straight through. That's a good drive. Now we've got a cool little drop off here into a creek. It's even got a little bit of water in it. Not that we'll notice the water, but the drop off, you certainly will notice that. There is a rock step on the passenger side. My advice is to try and use that. I may hit the tow hitch now. Did it so slowly and so gently, it doesn't really matter. You don't come in your car there, you go. Yeah, I did, but I did it really controlled and slow, just no dramas at all. Of course, Nick's got to be a little more concerned with the drawbar of the trailer. But they're built tough and they can survive a little bit of scraping. Come out, come out. 
Righto, Lee's seen exactly what could happen here. He's going to take it slow and controlled. Yeah, nicely driven. That's good. Thank you very much. Uh, it all makes sense when you get down here. I do see the little rock step. As for Sean, oh, well, the 79 is about 400 foot long. There's a good chance he'll scrape everything before he gets through this. Yeah. Nice and slow. That's the key to these sort of things, I reckon. Nice and slow and you don't do damage. Gotta love that. Now, a couple of locals told us about this campsite right on the edge of an escarpment. They said it's not the biggest campsite, but it should easily accommodate us and the camper trailer. And heck, that's all we need. What a stunning... What's this place called? It's um, Dick's Knob, mate. I can't believe we're going to stay here tonight. Probably watch that sun go down, guys. Yep. Um, I believe the girls are going to set up the swags. <laughs> <laughs> all right, how about we get Let's ready? Let's get into it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Beautiful. The girls are going to help me get a fire going, and I'm trying to get it going nice and early before I set my camp up. That. that way we'll have maximum coals for Shauno to do some cooking. It's so important to get kids out here doing this. I don't know. This is how I grew up, scrummaging around in the dirt looking for firewood. I reckon my old man taught me that because he couldn't be bothered getting the firewood. It's a good lesson, though. Keep a kid out in the bush. I honestly think they can't go too far wrong. What do you reckon, girls? How about we light that? You reckon? Okay. Good work. Nice one, team. Knuckles. Yep. Yep. Right on, now go sip your swagger. No, I'm joking. I'll do that. Lee and the family get to stay in the Black Series Alpha right throughout this trip, and Nick is going to show them just how easy it is to set up. Once they've been shown once, they'll have that thing up lickety split. There we go. I reckon about, we've got two legs of lamb in there, I reckon about an hour and a half. We'll have medium rare lamb, it'll be beautiful. Can't wait. Oh, have a look at that. That. That's done. That's ready to go. It's really good song. Oh, yeah. Alright, isn't it? It's oh, alright. We've got the thumbs, thumbs up. And the kids give them the thumbs the approval. up. Approval. Yep, the approval. We've got it. This is exactly where families <laughs> ought to be. Out in the bush, four wheel driving together. Campfire, camp oven, and a billion stars. This is what life is all about. Wow, the meat just falls apart. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tour of Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand-up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam. But warning, it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Full Drive Supercenter, you get more for less. I absolutely love this time of day. It's actually called the Dawn Chorus because it's this time of day, just as the sun's hit the horizon, that all the bird life in the area really comes to life. Hence the term, the Dawn Chorus. I have a feeling we might be heading toward the coast today. My other <laughs> favourite environment. Have you ever seen a rainbow this close or what? <coughs> no. That is super cool. Time to pack up and hit the tracks. Our plan for today is to head out to Pebbly Beach but we're going to take some back tracks out to Station Creek. However, it's rained heavily in the night, so there could be a few boggy sections around. We've got some big trees around here. Very big trees, aren't they? That's, that's a big fat one. Look at that. Look how big Whoa. the trees. Something I really enjoy about four-wheel driving is that unknown. I know exactly where I am. I know where it leads. I've got no idea if I can get through, though. It's time to swap the trailer on Lee's Forby. By his own admission, Lee's had very little experience in towing a camper. One thing's for sure though, he's keen as mustard because of course, owning a camper would be perfect for Lee and the family. Really, I think the biggest tip I can give to any new player that's about to tow a camper trailer in off-road conditions is to be aware of where the camper trailer is when going through tight, twisty sections. 
Bang it down. Oh, yep. Just a head more. Yep. 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 That's perfection, boys. Got a proud owner of a new tractor tractor right there. How good is this? We're actually in that Cabbage Tree Creek, kind of Collets Creek area, which is to the north ever so slightly of Pebbly Beach. So we've decided to sort of zigzag our way in, if you will, over a few tracks that we've been told about by a couple of locals in the know that come out to Pebbly all the time. But we're finally pulling into camp at Pebbly Beach tonight. Aha, uh -huh. we've got some, uh, some, oh, that's, that is actually quite a puddle. That, that's really quite a puddle. All right, I'm gonna give it a bit of herb through this, pop out the other side. I think we do this one at a time, guys. This is those boggy, rainy sections that we said might still be hanging around. Ah, that side's all right, that one's good. The second one is, yeah, that's muddy and nasty. As you can see, there's a lot of water on the track and there's no way around but to get straight through the middle of it. Lee's watching with open eyes. Lee, just some advice with the trailer, mate, um, if in doubt. Just put the pedal down and you won't have any problems. Trailer will pretty much push you through as well. And he does it with ease. Shino, he's a veteran. He'll sail through there and the big 79 will sing. <laughs> Swampy looking country on the left there folks, there is a bypass track here, we're going around it on the right. It's a little bit rutted but um, no drama, it's pretty simple. Hey Lee, you got a copy up front mate? Yeah mate. I'm going to ask you, have you towed a trailer before? Done much um, with the trailer off road? No, not, not properly mate, no. From back here mate, looks like you can really tow that thing, it just looks like it's following everywhere obviously you're going. And um, you're making sort of easy work of that, that trailer up the bush. Thanks mate, yeah look, I mean obviously you know I'm, I know it's there but it's helping me if anything, it seems to be towing along really well. Yeah copy mate, it just seems to be plodding along, it's following the same track as your vehicle and um... Yeah it just looks, looks pretty easy. Yeah great, I don't think I'm going to have any dramas with this on, I'm, um, I'm actually enjoying having it there. Whilst we got a lot of rain at camp last night, I have a feeling this area here probably got more than we did. Yes. We're a bit slippery up there, mate. Woohoo! Oh, that's so Look at it. Oh, that's slippery. Oh, yeah, lots of mud. Have a look at the girls in the back, they are loving this. Get a kid in a four wheel drive and take them out bush, they'll remember it for life and they will want to keep coming back time after time. Oh, oh, that's pretty slippery. There's a lot of water hanging around. In fact, more water than I'd actually anticipated. Straight through. Don't know about them there. It's got a weird bit in the model. Yeah, girls, we're going in. Lee spots a bypass track that looks like a better option, but it was really deceptive, and the big wheel ruts have got him and the trailer bottomed out. Again, for Lee, it's time to bring out the winch. It appears I am stuck. This is one of those odd recoveries where there's a tree directly where you need it as an anchor. And as luck would have it, that's exactly what we're going to use. Otherwise, it'll be out in no time. Yep. 
we'll see how you go. Yeah. I might have to recover you out next week. Exactly right. <laughs> don't, don't go too far. The beauty with what Lee's done here is he hasn't tried to bury himself after he's gotten stuck, and that's something a lot of people do. That's pretty stuck. It's just real slippery stuff, no traction whatsoever. The winch is doing all the work here. I'm not in any great danger, there's no water coming in, so we'll just give it a rest and see how it goes in a minute. Yeah, smart move mate, smart move. As I predicted, it really wasn't that much of a winch recovery. The simple fact of the matter was, Lee didn't have enough traction to get through there. The winch, well, that just did the work for him. Righto, Shorto, you're up. Oh, he's got all the noise in the world but he's still going to get stuck. Come on then, Sean O. Get up it! Get into it! That's slippery. I thought that might have happened. Just, just dipped out. It's sitting on the chassis right now. Doesn't matter how much I rev it, we'll get into it. I just got a winch from here. Yeah, good call, mate. There's absolutely no point in tearing up the track if it's not going to do you any good at all. Where would you be without a winch? If you're going to do this, you've got to have a winch. You just, you've got it. You'd be crazy to come out here without one if you're going to hit puddles like that. Sure, I just giving that winch a rest now. You imagine trying to dig yourself out of that. That's it. Any second. And he's out. We're getting close to Station Creek Road, and that'll take us down to the beach soon. Yeah, good to go, mate. Ready when you are, eh? Yeah, right, eh? Yeah, right, 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 right. Settle down. I'm staying high on the left-hand side here rather than tackling this head-on. All right, one more here. There you go, we've got a little bit of that. All right, that one's all right. Yep. There you go. Now, that's a sound no one wants to hear in the bush. Maybe not. <laughs> Looks like Lee's got a few problems. We'll give um, Lee a quick full start. With all the water and mud that we've been doing over the last half a day or so, Lee's alternator has been playing up since the get-go. Oh, let's go. Let's snatch him. He's a tiny. Yeah! And as simple as that, we're on our way again. We've hit Station Creek Road, the main way into Pebbly Beach. Lee's alternator is working intermittently and it's okay for now. Pebbly Beach is so well run as far as I'm concerned. This is probably, almost should be a template for how these campsites are run. There's plenty of firewood down here. Kids are getting involved, putting it in the camper trailer. The camp caretaker, Rob, is actually back up here right now, mowing an area on the entrance. He doesn't have to do that. He just does it because he takes pride in his campsites down here. And I reckon Pebbly Beach, this, should be a template for all others around Australia to follow. Everybody loves going to the beach, especially the kids and the big kids too. Yeah, well, um, for those who haven't seen Pebbly before, you probably couldn't have asked for a better day to see it. I agree, geez, I've been in here in all sorts of weather. Oh, look at this. Stop it. Four wheel driving on a sandy beach has got to be one of the greatest things we can do in our four wheel drives. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I've just seen the most amazing sight. I am in love. I can see it, Jamie. First time driving on a beach ever as well is uh, another thing off my bucket list and Pebbly Beach is off my bucket list as well, so two birds, one stone, yeah. Personally, just for me anyway, I, I, it's my favourite surface or terrain I want to drive a, uh, and we should drive a full wheel drive, I love it. It's a little bit soft through here, Lee. You may, it's not too bad, mate. I was gonna say you may need to give it a bit, but I don't think you will. There's two ways to cross Pebbly. You can go directly in front, as you can see here on the left, or if it's a little higher than normal, you can actually skirt around to the right. And there's a slightly shallower crossing with a bit of a rocky bar down here on the right-hand side. If that's too deep in there, directly in here, we'll head up here to the right-hand side and we'll have a quick look now. It's not the challenge of getting across there, it's the fact that this is salt water. Right up where Shawno is, is actually a rock bar that goes across. And you can follow other, other tracks and go up, you can cross the rock bar and it's about that deep. If you just idle across that, the only thing that's gonna get salt water on it is your rims. I'd much rather replace, replace rims in a year's time 
than I would the entire undercarriage of my truck, as we all know. So we're going to go up there and cross. We're not going to cross here. Yeah, there should be a little line in the sand where I marked out that takes you on an arc across these rocks, which is probably the shallowest point. Oop, there's a big school of mullet I've just caused to, to chaos for them. That's pretty much your line there, guys. So we're just about to pop out of that salt water now. Straight, mate, you're in there a while. You're bathing. Yeah, nice and slow, mate, no splash. Lee, I'll let you put the camper wherever you want, mate. Um, I'll move out of the way for now, and then I'll position myself a bit later. I'm in no hurry. Tonight, it's Lee and Claire's turn to set up the Alpha by themselves. They look like they're doing really well setting up their camper. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're doing extremely well. They watched me do it yesterday and um, helped me out a bit, but as you can see, the ease of setup, they've pretty much got it down packed. It's the amount of uh, families that we actually have come in who have spent a week camping yep. in a tent. Yep. And they haven't even gone home, they've come straight to our showroom <laughs> and the said, we need a trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at Lee and the family, they are loving life with the trailer and I reckon it's really going to open up a world of possibilities for them. Imagine the surfboards, the bikes, all the other bits and pieces that can be fitted inside that camper. Rally. Not to mention the fact that they've got a full kitchen and if it does happen to rain, well, they're going to be snug as bugs in a rug. Pebbly Beach has got pretty much everything you could want in a campsite. I'm talking barbecue places, there's areas for fires, in fact there's even firewood at the beginning or the start of the campsite itself. There's an amenity block down the bottom end that has to be seen to be believed and of course every site has a grassy base to it which is just a pleasure to camp on. And out the front, well, you've got one of the nicest little bays you'll find on the east coast. If you think I like Pebbly Beach, well, <laughs> you're dead right. This place is paradise. Rob the caretaker loves this place as much as anyone and he's a wealth of knowledge on the area. So when you pay your fees, it's worthwhile having a chat about places to visit or places to catch fish. We've got something in store for dessert tonight. Let me tell you, it's quite ambitious. Get a load of this. Well, tonight we're down at one of my favourite camping locations anywhere on the east coast. We're down at Pebbly Beach and tonight is actually a very special occasion. You see, young Kayla she turns eight tonight. So I'm saying that really quiet because this is a bit of a surprise party we've got in store for tonight. I'm actually gonna build a cake. Four tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna need half a cup of sugar. We're probably gonna need a little bit of golden syrup. Two teaspoons or so, nothing, nothing crazy. That's, oh, that's probably heaps. And we're just gonna melt that up. It's sort of gonna caramelize up. So I wanna pour this now into a bowl. Look at that, you can smell that. Crack an egg. Now I'm going to beat that up, so I don't have an electric beater, but I do have a cordless drill and a tent peg. So bear with me again, that's a go. Make sure she's in, make sure she's in forward, don't go crazy. So I'm going to keep this aside, and we need a bowl to put the flour in. Now we don't have a bowl, but I do have a bucket. Now the bucket's clean, it's a brand new bucket, so i wash washed it out just to be safe. I want about a cup and a bit of plain flour, now I want to get some bicarb soda, about a tablespoon. A little bit of baking powder. Again, you want about a tablespoon of that. So the next thing you want to do, of course, is put the melted butter, the sugar, and the egg, and the syrup. Now that just goes straight in. Look, it doesn't look glamorous, but it might just work. The heck is going on? Don't even ask, mate. Don't. What are you, What is that? Why are you using a plastic bucket? What's going on? It's a cake. It's Kayla's party. Oh, what the heck? Yeah, that's, that's I didn't have a beater. Oh, <laughs> sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> just go gentle, go gentle. <laughs> just, uh. I was only got one. Too. Whoa! That's really good, man. So about three quarters of a cup of milk. Yep. That's, that's probably yeah, three quarters. Don't go in there. Okay. Nup, okay. Nup, 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 nup. I'm gonna put a little bit of vanilla essence in. Nice, mate. Nice. Yeah, look. Nice. You will need to use that very soon, though. Hang on before you do that. Sure bit of cocoa, this is a chocolate oh, cake after all, oh, isn't it? It's a couple of tablespoons, really. Just, oop. <laughs> Whoa! Are <laughs> hey, you gonna pop the bucket? No, I've got this. That's pretty smooth. Look, if you're using a bucket and a drill, you're not gonna really be pedantic about the smart, the oh, minor details, thanks mate. What I do is just put some baking paper inside the Baduri camp oven right now. The whole idea of that is I just don't want it to stick. Right, now cake mix goes in. Spread it around the camp oven nice and even. Come out with something like that. I reckon that's gonna work. 
I'm going to take some coals aside from the fire, cook them on the coals, put a few coals on top, and um, in half an hour, I'm just going to check and see what it looks like. So check. Betty Crocker, thank you for coming. Last but not least. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kayla. Happy birthday to you. Hooray! Hooray! That's a go. Hooray! Yeah. Did you make a wish? That's a go. All right. That is a work of art, mate. That is a chocolate cake. I'm going to say it. That has actually turned out really, really nice. It's probably one of the most creative things I've ever cooked in a camp oven. Fair few ingredients. We have to think pretty much outside of the square for this one. I want to say a big happy birthday to Kayla. All right, time to get into it. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power, King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? King's has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course, you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter, you get more for less. One of the beauties of waking up at Pebbly Beach, of course, is waking up to the sound of the ocean meters from your swag or your camper trailer. There's nothing like wandering down with a hot cup of coffee or a surfboard under your arm, or if you're Shorno, a fishing rod in your hand, and Pebbly Beach is perfect for all those things. The beauties of having a kitchen attached to your camper trailer are self-explanatory, and I don't reckon there's a more important meal of the day than breakfast. And if that breakfast is gonna be bacon and eggs, well, I'm first in line. Looks like someone or something has been at the cake mix this morning, and I think that culprit is making a getaway right there. Could have stayed here another week, two weeks. Heck, I could stay here a month. Or like Rob, I could live here. But it's time to move on. We've got tracks to tackle and a mile to make. We're just jumping back on the beach. Here just after that water crossing. You'll notice a couple of little signs floating around the place. And um, one in particular says no four-wheel drives beyond this point up here. And the other one is, of course, no dogs. It's just little things like that that us four-wheel drivers need to really adhere to if we want to keep places open. Make less work for national parks and give them more reason to let us into beautiful places like this. Sean's dead right. It's a nesting area for the local bird life, and that makes this place feel so alive. Our plan is to head up to Woolai Beach today, but we're taking the back road through the bush in true four-wheel drive action style. It's got us a bit of a gate here. This gate's currently closed. I'll open it, we'll go through. The last person in the convoy will close it again. So the rule of thumb is leave the gates exactly as you find them. The good news is that track looks like it deteriorates from here on in. Yoo there's been some more rain overnight and it's topped up the puddles nicely. Seems to be a firm base though, so we're good right now. Hey guys, we're getting pretty close to this turn off. Obviously that rain wasn't localised last night, it's been all through here. There's a lot of water on this track still. Just uh, take it easy with that trailer guys. Yeah, no dramas, it's uh, handling really well, so I don't think I should have any dramas here mate. Look at the water everywhere. Look at this, you've got no choice, hands off the wheel, just drive in the ruts. It's so slippery, you, you couldn't get out of these ruts. You can get out a million horsepower, 25 lockers. There's two choices here, but I reckon they're much of a muchness. A lot of rain, this track's underwater, guys. Should have a fairly firm base and everything too bad so far, so I'm just gonna head on in and hope for the best, eh? And struth, Bruce, it's a little deeper than I thought. We can just turn that Isuzu into a boat, Graham. Yep, that was deep, that was really deep. Around a bow wave, no dramas at all. The look on Claire's face though, I don't know, she's so sure. 
do probably low range second and give it a hit through this water and just try and get out of it. I don't want to get stuck in there, so I'm going to have to give it some berries. Yeah, like your plan, mate. All right, we're coming through. Come on, Shorto. Show us what you got. Oh, dear. That doesn't look great. Oh, that's boggy. My damn just locked me hubs, eh? That one's all right. <laughs> You've got to lock the hubs in to get four-wheel drive to work, mate. <laughs> Good one, Sean, eh? <laughs> mate, that'd look hard. Little tip for new players. Lock your hubs before you jump in a bog hole. According to the VMS, mate, we should be almost getting the tyres wet down here. This uh, Collet's Crossing should be right in front of us. The thing that concerns me, mate, is um, on the VMS it shows it to be quite a wide little river. <laughs> Yo. Whoa, we are not crossing that. Have a look at this thing, gee whiz. You'll be Barramundi in there. I can see the crossing. To get north to the beach, we've got to cross this or face going the long way around. Once again, if this was fresh water, I wouldn't hesitate in making this crossing. That's pretty salty. Okay, I must have had too many potato chips. The deepest point's in here. Yeah. About here. Yeah. That, that's a no go, that crossing, as far as I'm concerned. No way. Alright, back to the VMS, eh? Oh, definitely back to the VMS. We've got to go the long way around, and that means tight and twisty tracks and big bog holes. We've decided to put the trailer back on Nick's patrol as he stands a better chance of getting it through the deep ruts with his high clearance and 35s. We're a bit behind schedule now, and we want to reach Wallow before sundown because there simply isn't anywhere to camp in this stretch of bush. Good to go. All done. Little boggy section here, guys. I don't think it's too bad. We'll get into it. Mayday, 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 mayday. <laughs> Famous last words, are they, mate? We need to get into this one. Pretty lickety split, folks. Pretty lickety split. Gobby. All the boys are getting into this as quick as possible, and they're going to pull me out backwards really quickly. It's great to have teamwork in a situation like this. You don't want to be hanging around in a muddy bog hole. <laughs> oh, that's Of course, what's gone on here is when we've done the recovery backwards, the exhaust pipe has scooped up a perfect core sample of mud. Oh, look at that. That's a core sample. This is where the wheels started. They started slipping at this point. He decided, <laughs> uh-oh, at that point. Yep. It was this point here when he really thought, I'm not going forwards yep. or backwards. And, no, um, no. All right. Um, how about we take the track that everyone else has taken and go around that bog hole? We're all going to do the sensible option here and take the bypass track, but Nick thinks he can make it and wants to have a go. There you go. It's too smelly for me. The VMS they came across as what would best be described as little white pink dots or red dots I guess, which indicates on maps that the track is rarely to never use and is really only a guide. It doesn't even tell you an accurate description of where it is. That's how faint this track is. We probably should have taken that left-hand turn. This area through here is a maze of tracks and fallen trees. It's amazingly tight and twisty. You're right smack down in the middle. We need to break it up. I'm going to drive over it on the right-hand side, mate. I should be able to drive over this. You're going to drive over that section? Hmm? You're going to drive over that section? Yeah. Well, I might do this one before you do that so you don't lift this up anymore. Right. When it comes to crossing logs like this, the option I always like to try and take is to straddle the log on a diagonal so that one wheel is going over at a time. By going this way, you can almost step across the log. Bring it through, Nick. Nick's doing exactly the same thing and you can see just how tight the tolerances are here.
Yeah, Nick's really concentrating there. You can see him just keeping an eye on that camper trailer in the rear view mirrors. He's doing good. The trailer didn't have a choice there. You want to come through, mate, or you're right? Lee's seen what we've done. He's going to take the exact same route. Go back. Come over a bit more. You want to get your driver's side wheel over here. Yeah, go all the way back to Adam and have another go at it. He's going to have to get over to his right-hand side That's just a it. bit more here. And just bounce across with a bit more momentum. That's it, mate. Well done. Hold on there, Sean. you got a big stick here. It's right in there, too. It's literally caught between the spring and the wheel. And it's gone all the way. It's really touched my front wheel here. Well, I'm um, going to have to chop that out, I think, with an axe. While Sean's fixing his problem, Lee's got problems of his own. Well, alternator's on its way. All the power inside's on its way out. I just want to see if I can give it a rev up and see if I can get some more power into it. Just chop this bit out. Then we can get on the small stick then. Looks like his alternator has failed again and it's not a great spot for it. Sean O, that is one way to collect firewood, mate. I tell you what, though, I'd recommend putting it on the roof rack, not underneath the truck. Um, just going to have to jump out and eliminate some problems. I got that bit before. It must have a knob on it. Oh, look at that. I did most of that work. That's what happens when you use brute strength. Yeah. I hate it when he does that. Not great for trucks, of course. The moment we've got one truck down with a bit of an alternator issue, we'll try and fix that up before we come out. But the rest of us are doing all right so far. Touch wood. Hoping it's going to get us to where we're going. Otherwise, I don't think the boys are going to be too pleased with me because I chose this track. <laughs> Come on, get up there. Right now, the problem we've got with the 79 is that it's just too big to fit through the no, gap, mate. so we have to try and get him to come to back and take an alternate again. route. All right, coming up again now. This has got to be one of the most frustrating situations you can be in. To drop over. The vehicle's working fine. The track ah, is not no. even that hard. It's not work. But it's just logistically impossible for us to put the vehicle where we want it to go. We're not fitting forward, so Shano's going to try and cut down some fallen trees that have come down in a gap that we might be able to fit through. But... In the absence of a chainsaw, it's out with the axe, and everyone's going to give it a go to try and make this easier than it currently is. Stop throwing twigs out of the way and drive over the branch. Just break that log. You wouldn't think that you couldn't just drive forward, but there is, at every angle we take, a tree in the way or an obstacle that is preventing the 79 from getting through without doing panel damage. Can I just do it a million point turn? Yeah, maybe, yeah. Just hit that thing with the tire. Right. Yeah, keep going. In all my time of four wheel driving, I've never seen a predicament quite as tight and as twisty as that right there. The plan of attack to get Lee out of here, of course, is to use the multiple number of batteries that we've got between all of us. Why don't you swap it with a um, start battery? One of our start batteries. Put it in because at least the alternator, like I don't know, I've got a 130 amp alternator that'll charge a lot faster than one of my back ones. Yep. Yeah. I only get a 40 amp charger in the back. We'll start in here, then we'll jump you. Yeah. Yep. Shawno's running quite a few in the back, as is Nick in auxiliary batteries. We're going to pop those out, and get them into Lee's truck so that he can drive until those go flat. And whilst that happens, the other trucks will charge Lee's flat batteries. It's not going to work. Of course, we've got batteries that don't quite fit, or the positive and negative terminals are in the wrong spots to go back into Lee's oh, truck. We're idiots. Why don't we just turn the battery around? Put the positive on the negative and the negative on the positive, and then we'll just drive in reverse. Do that. Why didn't we think about that? I mean, we'll it'll be tricky that. to get out, but we can right, get out. People are going to believe that. They're going to go, ah, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> you can't do that. He's been a joker. This is why I say you shouldn't joke about mechanical things. <laughs> can you just have a quick look and see if your battery's going to, if you've got play on your leads? We finally figured it out, and with a bit of mucking around, we've got enough batteries together to get Lee back on the track. A oh, oh. little bit of bush mechanics, and now the alternator seems to just be playing ball. It's trickling enough charge into those batteries to allow us to get back on the road. And moment of truth. Put a little hole inside a drink bottle here so we could get some real pressure on that water bottle. Wash some of the mud that we thought that was blocking up the brushes in the alternator. WD-40. And when he revs it, 
the charge is coming back up, so I think we might be able to get this one out in its own steam tonight, mate. Yeah, thank you very much. That is good. Having got Lee back on the move, it's not much further until this track pops out near Woolai, and then it's a quick drive on the tar right down to the beach. Well, after all that, I'll tell you what, the beach is actually it's a pretty, pretty good sight. I think the first thing I'm going to do is get down and have a wash, mate, because I am covered in all sorts of coughs over mud. I'm going to skim it between you. Oh, that's a good skim. That was actually a pretty good skim. You know what, mate? I got to thinking about this a uh, couple of days we've spent. You could have got a holiday pass for the kids on one of those big theme parks on the Gold Coast or on the, I don't know where they are. Or put that money into chucking them in a Forby, yep. getting them out of the mud. You saw them in the mud. I absolutely oh, loved every minute of it. haven't stopped laughing. Look at them. Get them down here on the beach. And I reckon that would cost you a whole heck less and they would get a whole lot more out of it. Look, the other thing I really like is the education kids get from coming out in the bush. I think every Australian deserves to come out and see the real Australia at some yep. stage in their life, if not multiple, multiple times. Yep. Now, these guys missed a week of school, so I reckon they learnt a hell of a lot oh. more than they would have in any old classroom. They certainly did around the campfire with you, Sean. <laughs> Folks, if you've got little ones out there, I just I can't recommend it more. Chuck them in the back of the Forby. They don't need anything in the back there because they're looking out the windows. They're grabbing leaves and twigs like dogs as they go by. Don't worry about washing them. Chuck them in the ocean at the end of the day like they're done here. They'll be good to go. Get them out in the bush, keep kids in the bush. That's where they absolutely flourish. Good on you, good on you, good on them. I'm gonna go and have a wash because I'm absolutely filthy. I've got half a cop's half of mud in yeah. my pants. Yeah. That's, That's not pretty. Not pretty at all. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> we'll drive action. Don't wash your pants, you filthy so. Disgusting. <laughs> that was a line and a half. Half of cop's half of mud in my pants. Forget building your own set of storage drawers or paying well over $1,000 for a set elsewhere. And get your hands on a set of incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. Our entire range of Titan Storage Drawers have been built to handle just about anything you can throw at them. All models of Titan Double Drawers come with an included built-in fridge slide on the left-hand side, saving you up to $200 compared to some other brands that charge extra for a fridge slide. Each draw top also has these heavy duty spring loaded tie down points to secure your gear on even the most corrugated roads. We've put them through their paces like none other. We've jumped on them, overloaded them with bricks, chucked an engine on the drawers at full extension, absolutely flooded them and used them off road year after year to prove just how tough they are. The Titan 900 single drawer is perfect for those who have limited space to install a storage drawer. It has internal dimensions of 430 millimeters wide, 790 millimeters long and 190 millimeters deep. The Titan 900 double draw setup is ideal for smaller wagons like Prados, Pajeros and SUVs, with the internal dimensions identical to the 900 single draw on each side. The Titan 1300 ute drawers are made specifically for vans and utes. The internal dimensions are 1200 millimeters long, 430 millimeters wide and 150 millimeters high. The 1300mm single drawers are also a cracking addition to the back of vans and utes. The internal dimensions are the same as the double 1300 drawers, but have an extra 40mm of depth, making them 190mm deep. And finally, for the bigger wagons like Land Cruisers and Patrols, the double 1070 storage drawers have internal dimensions of 880mm long, 470mm wide, and 180mm of depth. They come 95% pre-assembled, and all you need to install them is a couple of basic hand tools and a couple of hours on a lazy Sunday Arvo. You can also add optional wing kits, both model specific and DIY. So you can finish off the back of your four wheel drive and have plenty of storage available for your next adventure. Take your setup to the next level with the incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. 
But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test, so they're ready to be put to use. Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries though can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, Lightweight, super powerful, and super long-lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure King's premium camp oven stove your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking, and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes, and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind, one less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. The raised and closed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus, your fire would last longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. 
The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo or your shed for maximum warmth. And the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the Premium Camp Oven Stove as required. Inside, you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down to with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure Kings premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too. You asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two ton ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1 because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the Four Wheel Drive Supercenter website. Now with a two ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure Kings MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.